Hey everybody, I'm Jeff. And I'm Linda. And welcome to another episode of VAPI Fireside Chats. We love doing these chats because we're out yeah. here in the marsh. Yes. And when we're not camping out in the mountains and we're not on a paranormal investigation, we're out here in the marsh. And I know a lot of you, I've seen some comments and some people have said we really want to see some more investigations. And believe me, I've been so tied up. They are forthcoming. They are forthcoming. Like I have a load of investigations going back a yes. year that I just haven't had time to put together right. to post on this because these videos are so simple and, and some of the gas scrubbing yes. ghosts we can put together and put out there for you. But the investigations take a little more time because of my editing capabilities. And, and let me tell you, a lot of people yeah. wonder, and I've had people ask me, like, how do you, so when you edit these videos, what do you do? So what I do is I edit them on my Apple iPhone X. Right. Right. I really, that's how I, I edit movie, all these videos. The iMovie app the for, iMovie, for mobile. Right. So for example, when we do an investigation, I use a Sony 4K camera to do that investigation. To get those files onto the phone here to edit them, I have to upload them to Google Drive, download them to the phone, have enough room on my phone to download them, and then go ahead yes. and edit them together on my phone. So that's why the investigations haven't been out there quite as much. Well, and that's only part of it, really, because if none of you, as some of you may know that Jeff is in seminary school. Yes. Jeff is a school teacher, an elementary school teacher by day. And then in the evening, he's actually taking seminary school classes. So he's in kind of an advanced sort of, um, what do they call that? Like compressed, like you're Some getting them, a bachelor's degree in like two or three years. A master's you know what degree, I mean? yes. Ma yes, it's like crazy kind of shit. You yeah. Know? You know, like, like you're really, really kind of crazy stuff. That so it's a lot of stuff going on. He's stuck to the computer in the evening, basically from the time that um, we are done with dinner um, up until like 10 o'clock in the evening. He's, he's really stuck to the computer writing, 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 writing. Right. And doing these little like notations and all these things like footnotes and stuff. It's really kind of goofy stuff, really, if you think about it. But there's a means to an end, I'm sure. But he's in there seminary is. school right now, which is another reason why he doesn't get the videos edited. The time to do as, it. Yeah, yes. as quickly as he can. Yes, and, and my daughter Alex, she's been out on some of our investigations with us. We brought yes. her on some of the ones that haven't been... Uh, very demonic or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, we don't bring her on anything that's kind of scary. Right, nothing that's no. too bad. We've took her on a couple of Bigfoot expeditions, which are pretty yeah. cool. Um, and I, of course, got to highlight our uh, Slakum channel, S L A L A K U M, um, and that's on YouTube, on Instagram, whatever you go to. Type in Slakum. It'll come up with cool pictures and everything. And we love this we because do. this is kind of our side hobby, and it. it it's VAPI, it's paranormal, but right. our main goal as VAPI is to go out and do paranormal investigations. It's to help people, and that's what we prioritize. People that are really troubled by the activity that they're having, yes. we put them first and foremost. We yes. put the people that are just kind of experiencing activity, but it's not really bothering them, secondary. Right. And then when we have some time to get in a camping trip or to go yeah. out somewhere to look for Bigfoot, right. that is something that we love doing. So yes. that's what Salakam is all about. It's all about our our spare time that we have to look for Bigfoot. Right, right. Okay. Exactly. Right now at the campfire chats, fireside chats, I keep saying campfire because our fireside chats are always by campfire, but perhaps one time they'll be by some kind of a fireplace inside a nice house or... Perhaps. Maybe. Maybe they'll be at like a wood-burning stove at Suge Knight Cabin. Suge Knight Cabin. You always say that. Sugar Knob. Sugar Knob Cabin. Suge Knight is the one that... Right. Was the rapper. Look up, if you want to find Bigfoot, look up PTAC Cabins on Google. That's what's going to lead you to the Sugar Knob Cabin. It's just over the border in West Virginia, and it's one of those cabins that's kind of off the grid. It's out in the middle of nowhere, and evidently there's been quite a few stories. A three-mile moderate hike to get out there, too. Exactly. It's in yes. West Virginia. It is in West Virginia. I didn't know that. You did not know that? I thought it was in Virginia this no, whole time. No, no. It's you have to cross over the border in West into West Virginia before you get to this cabin. Yes, That's it is something. in West Virginia. But we do have our campfire going here, as you can see, it kind of blaring on the side here. Yeah. And then maybe you can see down there. There's a dog. There's a dog. Yep. And he's hot. 
he lays by the fire and, and just kind of chills he, out. He's a black dog, so he just kind of blends in. Yeah, you can't really see him at night too yeah. well. Yeah, and he's he's old. He's like 13 years old, so he's kind of laying here. He sleeps for about maybe 20 hours a day at this point. Right. He's a good dog, but he just sleeps 20 hours a day. And the, this, the problem with dogs is like when they get old, they become really good dogs. Yeah. You're really, you know, I love dogs. But yeah. I, I love old dogs because yeah. that's when they start to mellow out right. and just kind of chill out, and then they die. I know. So it sucks because you spend your I whole know. their whole life like raising this dog and teaching them right, and then he's like, "All right, I got it." And then, but hopefully, yeah. Taco's got a couple years left. You I weren't teaching them right though, because about maybe five or six years ago, when I moved into this house, I found them actually standing on the dining room table. Like I went out to my car to get something, <laughs> and I come back in. And this damn dog was standing on the dining room table like it was cool. Like, just like, you know, like, oh, you know, hey, hey, what's going on? You know, yeah. he thought it was cool. He did. He had he no did. discipline whatsoever. None. None. Now he's too old to get on the table or he's too old to get up and eat the sausages out of the pan or yeah. the oven. That's what I'm saying is, is the dog's too old to do that stuff now. That's and now he's a good dog. A good dog. Now right. he's a good dog. Yeah. But we took him camping with us for the first time ever he in his did. life. He's got a camping collar. He did pretty well. It's got lanterns on it and fire, burn campfires and stuff. Yes. But we took him camping with us, and that was pretty cool. So I want you to, I'm going to encourage you to check out the Slalakum channel because that yeah. video will be posted shortly. It may be posted before this video even is. So hop over there and check it out. Yeah. But we also started this thing, and, and I'm not going to try to give too long of an intro here to this video. But I want to fill everyone in on all the stuff that we got going on. Yeah. We started basically what's called the Triple G Vlog. All right. We did? And, yes. You what's didn't know about this. Triple G Vlog? Gas Grub and Ghosts. Oh. And this is a vlog. So Gas Grub and Ghosts itself is pretty much, it can be considered a vlog. Because right, true. for those yeah. of you that don't know, we film the trip. We don't do anything about the investigation in these videos. We right. just film the trip. Because uh, we traveled all these cool places. We eat at the, all these neat little restaurants and love gas station food. We review it, we eat it. But we started that years ago. We do, yes, we do. But recently, what I started mm -hmm. was the Triple G Vlog. And this is basically a 10-minute video that we're going to put out. We're going to try to do it every week. I'm not sure that we can. It depends on what we have going on that week. But it's a 10-minute video that basically summarizes our weekend. And I have one that I'm going to post if I haven't already. If it okay. is posted, it's, you know, check it out. It's probably back on our channel. If not, wait for it where we basically reviewed our weekend of, of our Bigfoot expedition. Right. And it kind of goes through, the vlog just kind of goes through, hey, this is what we did this weekend. This is the story of our weekend. Here's some pictures of it. How are we going to do Check that it out when 10 it comes minutes? Up. That goes fast. It's already done. 10 minutes. I already have one edited, and it's getting ready to be posted. Okay. I'll have to show it to you. Yeah. You'll have to watch it. Yeah, Linda doesn't, doesn't watch me. any of our videos. It's because he doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> He's like in his own little world out there, and, and I have to I, I think these myself. things, and sometimes I forget to mention them, and I just yeah. go ahead and do them. Uh, but yeah, exactly. I think it's a pretty cool thing because it's, it's a quick vlog of a recap of, of a weekend in the life of a ghost hunter. And right. I call it the Triple G vlog because of gas grubbing ghosts. So I want to kind of keep that branding there because I love gas grubbing yeah. ghosts. I think that has some potential. We only get like a thousand views per video and now it's less because yeah. we haven't been doing as much lately and people have kind of dwindled off. They but dwindled off because I open my mouth and I say things that like exclude other people sometimes. I, I I'm don't fully think it's exclusionary. I think it's... I, no, I'm fully accepting of that. Accepting, I'm, that's okay, the word see, we're looking for. The deal is that I'm 45 years old, right? I'm getting to the point at, that I don't just don't give a damn what you think right well we care what you think no we don't <laughs> <laughs> no but i'm saying like seriously no it's it's getting to the point where i say things uh, things like come to my brain and they yeah. come out of my mouth faster than i can think about them and say maybe right. i shouldn't say this right i'm less um uh, i'm less conscientious about the things that come out of my mouth now than I ever was before. I'm more willing to stand up for my beliefs, okay? Right. And for, to stand up for what I believe in because I know that, um, you know, I don't ever criticize anybody or say anything terrible about anybody. I'm just willing, more willing to say what I believe about things now than I ever was before. 
And I think that's what makes the difference, really, is, is the fact that I say right. things. It may alienate some people, but those people are probably idiots to begin with. You know, they're just like, you know, these people that are lost souls, you know, out in society. We know what we are. We know who we are. We know what we're doing. We know that it's good. We know that it's pure. You know yes, what I mean? Yes, absolutely. It, it's not 100%. something that is, um, you know... Like, I'm not trying to teach you Nazi beliefs or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, this is, yeah. this is good stuff, you know? And, and what I have to say here is, is because, like, of the time in editing these videos, I don't, <laughs> I have the ability, but I don't have the time to go ahead and put this whole caption on the bottom of Linda's <laughs> spiel right there. So I'm just going to go out and say it, like, VAPI does not necessarily endorse any of this conversation. Uh, it's our own personal <laughs> beliefs and our own personal thoughts uh, that are brought to you by VAPI, though it doesn't necessarily mean that VAPI says, hey, we don't care what you think. VAPI cares what you think. Linda doesn't. <laughs> 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 All right. So, so that That's being... a little younger. He's getting to the point, like he's five years old. Yeah, I'm only 35. Right. So he's got to get to my point where he just doesn't give a damn. I'm not 35. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but what we're gonna do in this here is we're going eleven. We're gonna have a whole episode of us just sitting here talking without even posing the questions. I know exactly. All right? right. So we'll we'll talk more at the end. Right. Let's do that. Okay. Right now, let's get to the questions. So I don't even know what these questions are. You have to think of one. Because so Linda's gonna think of a question to ask me. I'm gonna think of a question oh, to ask her, and we're gonna flip this camera around, and we're gonna see what the responses are gonna be. So. Stay on the spot. tuned. Totally on the spot. On the spot. This is on the fly. And I'll tell you what, like, there was literally a whole episode. Like, you'll notice that it goes from, like, episode 8 to episode 10 or something like that. Because one of the episodes was completely dropped. Because I was asked a question on the fly, and the answer I gave was a bad answer. So we just, whoosh, let's yeah, cut so that out. Sometimes it's the other way around, though, too, I have to mm. say. It's a lot of times what I've said that's probably, right. like, we're questioning should we actually post that? Right, because, and we don't post it. But yeah. it was an episode, so we count it as an episode. It's just not a released episode. Right. So that's why you may... It's not right. that we can't count. It's just that some of the episodes have been no, and I think not that's posted. A, that's a Patreon thing, really. Patreon, I think that Patreon. should be a Patreon. Right. But if pay, people pay to see that, they're going to regret it. They're going to ask for their money back. No, they're not. They're going to be like wanting to pay more. I, I'm thinking that that's going to be like the uncut sort of, it, version, it may of a, be. a version of a movie, you know, where people just like totally say what they want to say and like not even give a damn about, you know, being yeah politically But there's some or, stuff you don't want to leak, you know what I mean? There's just some stuff that you just... I don't know. I mean, I don't think there's anything that we say ever that's really that much of a difference. Like, it, you know, we're never really totally criticizing anybody, really. It's just things that you think should be more politically correct than what we actually say. We're not concerned. Yeah. I'm not concerned about being politically correct. Jeff, eh, he's if you about like, five years younger. So. so if you like our politics, then you might want to subscribe to the Patreon. <laughs> yeah, because that's the <laughs> let's kind of just, thing. We'll release those videos. Let's just kind of leave it at yeah. that, right? Yeah. All right, so let's let's get to the questions here. And keep in mind, if you have some questions for us, drop yeah, them down we below. Yeah, we want to hear those questions. We, we want really to respond do. to them. We yeah. do. We love to do that. It's and better to respond to the people's questions than it is to come up with our own. And some people may watch this and be like, wow, these guys got 200 views. Like, what are the chances of them picking our questions? Right. You know, it's only 200 views, so there's a pretty good chance. <laughs> so, Linda. Mm hmm we get many calls to many different situations throughout the entire state of Virginia, the surrounding yeah. states, and some states that aren't really surrounding Virginia. Mm -hmm. And we hear from a lot of people. Like, people don't realize at home that we are constantly on the phone, like almost on a nightly basis. Yeah, yeah And sometimes it ends in a counseling session. Sometimes it ends in us scheduling an investigation. Sometimes it ends in us blocking the person or trying not to, that is not true. to talk to the person. That is true. <laughs> but has there ever been... Now, people will wonder. There's a lot... The... the Paranormal covers a broad spectrum. It does. Has there does. ever been a case that you have been on, and, and don't mention anything that would be specific. necessarily give this person right, away. specific, yeah. Okay. But has there ever been a case where you've gone to and you said, you know what, there's nothing paranormal going on here. This is purely coming from within the mind of this individual that called us out. Oh, certainly. Oh, oh yes, absolutely. And what led you to believe that? So... 
we get calls from all kinds of people, all walks of life, all ages, all genders, all everything, right? We're, when we get an initial call, okay, we're talking to these people for a few minutes and we're trying to understand exactly what they have going on. And it's kind of like a plumbing situation. If somebody calls a plumber, right? You're telling them on the phone, well, my toilet doesn't work. It's not flushing properly. There are a variety of different things that could be the reason why this toilet is not flushing properly. And it's the same thing with us. It takes the person actually coming out and looking at your toilet and analyzing the situation, diagnosing the problem before we can actually make an assumption about it. So we go out there and we meet these people having no idea whether we're walking into a situation where we might get killed, okay? Um, you know, these people's houses, we have no idea who these people are. And we walk into their houses, we listen to what they have to say, but there are a lot of times when people, I mean, you have factors involved that you have to consider. You have medications, okay? You have things like old age, which brings on questions about dementia and questions about, you know, your, like things like Alzheimer's disease, okay? Um, and all we have to go on is what we know of these things. We can look up a medication. We can try to figure out exactly what this medication may cause or what the interaction between two different medications this person is causing. Um, that, you know, because they may take one medication, another medication, the interaction may be what causes this to occur. We have no idea. There may be things like, um, like I say, dementia. And dementia is a crazy thing. My father is at the point now where he's almost 80 years old. He'll be 80 this August. And um, he's starting to have an early onset of dementia. And um, there are certain things with dementia, if you know anything about it, that just make you think, perhaps this is something paranormal, right? There are a lot of things like that that make you question, um, if, is this something paranormal? The people who are experiencing it are the ones who are thinking that it's paranormal. You have to go in as an investigator and determine whether it's something that is actually paranormal or not. And there are times, uh, unfortunately, where we go in and decide that it's probably something psychological, something that's up here, as opposed to being something out there that's causing this problem. And um, there's a number of different factors that we look at. We look at um, certain situations, like whether or not a person is experiencing things at a certain time period during the day. If you are experiencing something only at 1030 at night, let's say, um, the, the chances are this is not something in the form of dementia. Um, it could still be something in the form of, of medication because you take medication at a certain time each day. So we have to factor those things in. Um, if this person is experiencing things that are, um, you know, like let's say they say, they say one thing and, and we're thinking, okay, this could be dementia. And the next thing they say is, is something that is totally like out of the realm of dementia. What we know is dementia and how it, how it brings, how it presents itself in the human mind. Um, then, you know, you lean away from dementia. It's like you're taking these different pieces of the puzzle and you're trying to form these to, together and trying to come up with some sort of puzzle that, that looks like a complete image. And it's often very difficult. It takes, I, I would say, an investigative mind. You can't be one of those people that's just like, you know, oh, you know, you took that, that, you took that test in school and it said you should be a farmer. You know what I mean? Like the career test that they gave you in school. You got to be one of those that's like kind of more of an investigative. You want to find the clues. You want to put the clues together. You want to be able to analyze these clues and decide what the end result is and what makes the most sense about it. And that's kind of what we do is, um, you know, we're both kind of that investigative mindset. We want to find out exactly what all of those clues are. We want to put them all together and kind of analyze at that point 
whether or not we think it's something that is, you know, of the mind, something that is of, of a demonic nature, of a spiritual nature, or the screwed up thing is, is that it could be a combination of those. And I say that because demons can come into your mind, they can affect your mind and make you think crazy, right? When you think crazy, your mind is projecting these things. You're seeing things that should not be there. It's not necessarily a demon that's making you see these exact things, uh -huh. but it could be that the demon is affecting your mind in such a way that it's making you have the certain power. Perhaps you are able to see into the future. Perhaps you're able to see into the past. Who knows? But at the same time, you've got to consider all of those factors, put them all together and decide what the exact resolution, the solution of this is going to be. So quite an answer from Linda here. Uh, you got to be somebody who knows some big words to maybe understand all of it. Because there were some, <laughs> there's some big was words. Was there big in there. words? In there? <laughs> I don't know. There's like words like associate and stuff like that. Like some people are like, what the hell? Yeah, I don't know. But <laughs> that was a very good answer. And, and basically, if you think of it, anything could be an influence. Like even if somebody has like a, what we would perceive as a sound medical explanation, like this person has this kind of mental issue going on. Right. Psychologists, a lot of time, they kind of look at statistics. They Statistically do. speaking, a person who acts like this and responds like this has this. Probably has this. Right. Yes. So. But that's not necessarily anything true. Anything can be paranormal. It really right. can. And it's, it, it's worth entertaining. It surely is. Yeah, now, because let me tell you, like psychologists are often the people that try to find a medical explanation for things that are paranormal. Because they have problems. Not, Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of psychologists go into it because they're trying to They're trying diagnose. to figure themselves out. Right. I've heard that. No, I'm right. not saying that's true. I know... No, he's the one who said it, so he's saying it's true. Well, I know very few psychologists, <laughs> right? But the ones I do know, like, they kind of grew up with these issues that they wanted a better understanding of. Right. So they went into the field to get a better understanding of that and finding out that still there's... Almost like with paranormal right. investigation, there's as much question in the field as there was before he went into the field. But like, let's take sleep apnea, like we were talking about with Mike. Yes. Mike is a new investigator. He's only only been with us two times now. Um, well, we were talking to him last night about sleep apnea. And this is one of those things where a lack of oxygen to the brain, we don't know what effects that can have on people. So we start talking about sleep paralysis, right? Sleep paralysis is one of those things where you always question, is this something psychological or is this something that is completely spiritual? Right. Um, there are, there's a show that I watched on Netflix. I can't think of the name of it right now. That when I watched that show, I was like, there's no way this is completely just medical. Like, there's no way in the world that this is something that's completely medical. And it had me believing that there has some sort of an alien nature to it mm -hmm. as well, which is creepy and weird and freaky. You don't even think about aliens being involved in a sleep apnea hmm, situation aliens, or, a, or a sleep paralysis situation. But it's one of those things that borders. It rides that border between the psychological, the paranormal, and it makes you think, is which side of that border does this fall on? And that's the, that's the most interesting things are the things that are sort of riding that border that make you really question it and question, are we seeing something paranormal? Or are we seeing something psychological? So, Jeff, I have a question that is going to completely go off the scale of what people normally ask, right? The questions that people normally ask about aliens. And I want you to answer to the best of your ability what your belief is as far as the opinion, your opinion, on how aliens would urinate and defecate. We understand that they have mouths, little slits for their noses, right? Do you believe that they defecate in the same way that we do? What kind of toilet paper do they use? 
do they prefer toilet paper that is like angel soft or do they have some other means do they use bidets like the french that's a very good question and <laughs> i mean i have limited knowledge of this and i can only theorize but to quote george on seinfeld like if you look at toilet paper over the history of time like very little has changed toilet paper has stayed the same it's been one thing that there's been no advancements in toilet paper uh, then jerry jumps in and he says well sure they make it softer they make it in different colors you know, they make it more they make on a it roll. In different colors? i think they do have different colors maybe he didn't say that but i think they do have different colored toilet <laughs> paper but really, if you think about it, I think George is more so right because toilet paper really hasn't changed much No. over the no, history no. of time. So in an advanced civilization, how would toilet paper have changed? Now, they do have those bodets. Bidets. Bidets. Bidet. Right? So I would think that aliens... I mean, to me, nothing would be a good old roll of toilet paper. You know, because there's just that that sensation that you're, you're you're wiping, and you're getting it clean. But perhaps I I know on Star Trek, and I I'm sorry to bring this up because I know so many of you are probably Star Wars fans, and like, why are you bringing up Star Trek? I've I've always liked Star Trek. I'm not liberal, but I've I've always liked it, and uh, <laughs> I've. I know they have what's called a sonic shower. And on the show, unfortunately, they've never shown anyone taking the sonic shower, so I don't know what that all entails. Right. But I don't think it involves water. It doesn't seem to. It doesn't, because sonic, no. to me, is... Sound. Right. Sound. So I wonder if the aliens are so far advanced that they have some kind of technology where they have some kind of a, a sonic force that comes out of the toilet and cleans their butts for them right you know yeah like sound waves that come out and and they all they have to do is bend over in a certain location right and, and boom there you go you like the, yeah like they, and they're clean we know they have ray guns and stuff like that so they must have some kind of a sonic wiping device that perhaps cleans them after they poop uh as far as urinating that's a good question because i've seen a lot of convincing pictures of aliens second thought maybe they weren't very convincing but there's no means for the urine to right does it do they jut it out into space as they're flying along well, where does it come out of does the it, urine? do they have a holding tank like I'm like more an concerned rv with where does it come out of right and and it's got to be kind of out from between their legs like most people i would think i would think so but i mean the anatomy of an alien i really i can only speculate on right and and from the pictures and the depictions of them there's been nothing there that urine would come out of so maybe no i think the real question here is how they consume food because oh. if they consume food in the same way we do, it's got to have an orifice, they have right? Mouths. That it comes out of. That mouths to consume right. the food. But but see that's and what I'm saying. And we know the aliens love a real good steak <laughs> because they come all the way to Earth for a real good steak. That's right. Yes. Uh, to quote a infamous, non-famous rap song. Yes. Okay. Um, if you haven't seen the VAPI rap. Yeah, you got to look that up. Check it out. I'll, I'll link it at the end of this video. Right. So at the end of this video, if you stay tuned, it'll pop up and you'll be able to click on it and watch it. Um, <laughs> Just be prepared. I guess I'm at a loss for words for this question. But I don't know. <laughs> See, I got a good one because I, I stumped you. Yeah, I, I have no input on this. And, and like I said, with Paranormal Investigation, and I say this all the time, so not to beat a dead horse too much, but... When you start out in, in the paranormal field, there are so many people in the field that speak as experts and you read their stuff and you're like, oh, this is how this works and this is what this happens. And then when you actually get out there in the field and see it, you realize that all this stuff is just theory. Right. And there's more questions than there are answers. And that's what I love about it. It's just 
one big mystery that just keeps unfolding and it, and it keeps you get more questions and more questions and more paths to go down and those paths lead to more paths and the more you get along in the field unless you're BSing the people that are watching you and listening to you uh, really the more questions you have because if you really take statistics into the matter and, and eyewitness reports and experiences of the individuals that are that are in the midst of this paranormal activity there's a lot of stuff that does not correlate. And for example, I'll talk about EMF fields. And I started writing this, writing about this. EMF fields, it's almost like like paranormal doctrine. That, oh, if there's high EMF fields, spirits can use it to manifest. And, oh, if there's an EMF spike, perhaps there's a spirit presence. But... I have seen several places where there have been no EMF fields and there's been a plethora of activity. And at the same time, I've seen several times where there's been activity and not a single spike on the EMF detector. So some of the things that if you read about, they'll talk about as, as doctrine, as this is true, this is tried and true, it's really not. It's really not. There's so many questions out there in the paranormal field. and. And really what we're trying to do is answer these questions. We're trying to find out what we can with what we know. And, and it, we've, the more we see it, the more we realize what we know is very limited. It really is because this is a realm that is beyond our imagination. It's, it's a realm that some of us can't even bear to fathom. Uh, how do these spirits exist? How do aliens exist? Where do they come from? What do they eat? Uh, what is their intentions? How do they poop? How do they poop and pee? We can only speculate. Right. So, long story short, I would think if aliens can travel light years to come to another planet to get a good steak, they probably have another means to wipe their butt rather than toilet paper. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We really appreciate you joining us by the campfire tonight. It's such a beautiful night out here. It is. It's like 59 degrees in June. Yeah. And it's unheard of in these parts. It is. It's starting to get a little windy, and I'm a little afraid the uh, marshland out behind our house is going to catch fire because of this thing. But um, Or maybe the dog, because he's racked out. He's racked out by the fire. And... The wind is blowing right toward him. We'll watch him. We're, we're not going to let the dog catch on no, fire. So definitely not. all the PETA people that are watching, which is probably like a half of a person maybe. Maybe. Don't Quarter. go calling PETA on us. We're going to keep yeah. the dog out of the fire. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. And remember, there's much more to see in the alien's toilet.